And I'm getting older and you're getting younger. How's this working? Please around? talk like that. Yeah, <laughs> well, the thing about it is I'm forced to deal with, not forced, I'm privileged to have American Idol on my side now. So every time the kids come out, nine to 12 year olds going, mom, dad, there's Lionel. And you know what, I'm gonna ask you about this fantastic documentary, but oh. I do wanna congratulate you on Pop Pop becoming a granddad again. Can I tell you, it's a moment. My baby is having a baby. And, it, and by the way, it was 39 years ago, yesterday, we did We Are The World. It was a blink and Sophie was born. So all of a sudden, we're talking Elliot and Sophia having a kid. Are you kidding me? I'm thrilled. And we just got the gender reveal, but you knew already. Well, I knew. No, they kept a secret from me till the last minute. You know these two. They keep a secret from me, but they tell the rest of the world. You know how that works? <laughs> all right. 39 years ago yesterday, 39. you did the impossible. You're hosting. You're winning. You're performing. That's a job already. And touring. And touring. And then you have a night job organizing this? Well, first of all, I had a night job, but first of all, writing the song with Michael, because we didn't have a song. I thought it was going to be Quincy, Michael, um, myself, and Stevie. That was what it was supposed to be. Next thing we hear is Springsteen's waiting. Oh, God, are you kidding me? So everybody was just coming on board, and we had no song. That was the heart attack. And then from then on, it was, can we catch up to the train? And then it became a rocket, and then it's out of control. And so, I don't even know how we did this. Well, you're in a zoo at Michael's house, a literal zoo. <laughs> with you, the you saw it, right? Okay. Yes, okay. Well, that's ridiculous. I mean, between the snake and the, 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 <laughs> the dog and the chimp and the, and the it's, it was one zoo in it itself. And then we're trying to write lyrics. Are you kidding me? And it worked. And again, we had cassettes. We didn't just say, okay, here's the song, everybody. Click. No, we had to send them by, what was it, FedEx or whatever it was at that time. I don't know what we had back then. We had to get these cassettes to them, and a lot of them showed up having no idea what the song sounded like. Have you seen the whole documentary, I'm sure? Oh, have I? My well, God. Sheila E. had a very honest admission that she felt she was being used. Was that the case? And now I'm going to be a very honest person by saying, absolutely, <laughs> the only person close to Prince was Sheila. And so we were using her. I said, Sheila, can you get him? Now, now was she going to sing solos? No. But definitely get him. The only communications we had, well, was me and her. But at the time, she, he would trust her more than anybody. I had my fingers crossed, hoping she could pull it off, but it didn't happen. But that was the honest reveal. And by the way, as a producer, I left it in because that was an honest moment that I wanted her to, to acknowledge. And she felt it. Have you talked to her about it since? Oh, all the time. In fact, she talked about it right after she did it. <laughs> yeah, no, but I'm glad she put it in because it also it speaks to the tension. I mean, we, were, we didn't know what we were doing. We were just putting people together. Hopefully, I could have gotten Michael and Prince to stand together. But at the time, that was just, that was a Hail Mary, if you will. And t was it a situation of like too many cooks in the kitchen because Stevie wanted to do the Swahili thing? No, there, there's only one question we did not want anyone to ask. And that was one phrase we didn't want to say. I'm not sure about this. What do you think? You have 46... We are the worlds, because everyone in that room was a creative artist. So what we had to do was make sure, under no circumstances, do we farm it out. So when Stevie walked in, it was like, did he get the memo? I don't think he got the memo. <laughs> two, two, why, no, no, Willie Mongu. All I kept thinking was, oh, it's over. <laughs> and the last thing, that brings me to the funniest part of the, for me, the movie. Um, Ray Charles had to go to the bathroom. Tell me what happened. I did put that in, didn't I? I, I did put that in. I, I did put that in. I, I'm overhearing Ray. Uh, honey, honey, I, uh, we, we got to take a break for a minute. I got to go to the bathroom. And he said, where's, where's the bathroom? He's talking to Stevie. And Stevie said, well, you know, it's down the hall to the right and then take a left. He said, okay, let me get this straight now. It's down the hall. He says, I'll show you. And he grabs Ray by the arm and he walks out the door. And I think it was Billy Joel or somebody said, did anybody hear that conversation? <laughs> Blindly. In the... But I mean, if you know Ray, if you know Stevie, I'm still questioning whether they're blind. Because they're doing things that... 
Un unbelievable.